Hello everyone, it's SpawnPoint and welcome to my 2020 Smart Home Tech Tour, where I'm going to show you the smart tech that I'm using around my house on a daily basis, and hopefully it will give some inspiration to you too. And I'm going to cover everything, from the lights to the plugs, the heating and the speakers, and how I've integrated them all together. And I'm going to show you where I got each item from, and even how much it costs. I've put the links to every item in the description, along with the timestamps if you wish to jump to a certain section. And as always, if you've got any questions at all in relation to this video, please drop them in the comments and I will get back to you. So one of the easiest things that I changed around the house were the lights. So what I've done is I've swapped out all the bulbs for either Philips Hue or LifeX, probably the most popular two brands when it comes to smart lights. So in my living room, I've got a few floor lamps, which I've replaced with LifeX color bulbs. And these are around £50 or $40 each. And then behind the TV, I've got a five meter LifeX Z strip. And this is stuck to the back of the TV with 3M tape. And it gives a nice ambient glow when watching movies or gaming. You can get a starter kit for about £80 or $70, and then each additional meter is about £30 or $25. And I'm using a total of five meters here. Um, and the TV that I'm using here, this is the 55 inch C9 OLED from LG. And I'll tell you what, the picture quality on this TV is incredible. I use it mainly for my PlayStation 4 for gaming, and also use it for watching Netflix most evenings as well. But if you want to see a full living room tour, check out my 2020 room tour, which I've linked to above. Then in the kitchen, I've got two ceiling lights, and I've replaced these with color bulbs as well. Usually I have them set to a warm white, but I can also change them as well to any color combo, depending on the mood or the scene that I wish to set. And I'll show you how I create scenes later on, and that's pretty cool. Under the kitchen units, I've actually installed a really cheap Amazon LED strip. These cost about £15 or $15, and look pretty nice. And these are actually plugged into a smart home plug, so I can turn them on and off remotely. I'll explain more about these smart plugs a bit later as well, and how I turn normal items around my house into smart items. In the master bedroom, I've got a few lamps, so I'm using Philips Hue for these bulbs. And a side note, if you do use Philips Hue, you will also need a £40 or $50 bridge to control their product, whereas LifeX you don't, that just uses Wi-Fi. You can get these bulbs in most fittings as well, so you should be able to replace most of the bulbs in your own house, and I've linked to some of these in the description as well. On my desk, I've got a couple of lights. So I'm using the LifeX beam on the wall, and that can be set to any color combo at all. And then behind the desk itself, I've got a LifeX Z strip as well. Now the beam on the wall, that costs about £150 or $150. And I'm using a one meter Z strip behind the desk, and that's about £80 or $70. And if you've seen my original desk setup tour, you'll probably notice that quite a lot has changed since then. I do have another video in the pipeline that I'm hoping to release over the next couple of months. So I mentioned earlier that I use scenes for my lights, and this means I can create a scene or a theme for each room in the LifeX or the Philips app, and I can then call it using the Google Assistant or the Google Home app. So a few examples that I use around the house include a scene in the kitchen called Vibe. Now this changes the lights to these colors, and it completely transforms the room from the normal white bulbs in just one simple command. And then in the living room, I've got a few different scenes set up, including one called daytime, and that turns all the lights bright white, which is perfect for a dark day. I've got another one called retro, where all the lights turn a different shade of purple and pink. Now these scenes are great for creating a mood or a vibe that you might wanna set just by changing the light colors. Next, I wanna show you how I use speakers around my house to control the lights and other smart home tech that I've got. So I'm using Google Assistant, which means most of my speakers are Google Home or Nest speakers. However, I do have a few compatible ones too. So I've got a Google Mini in the hallway, which I often use just for voice commands, so to turn the lights on and off, for example. And these are super cheap at only £25 or $50 each, roughly. Then I've got others around the house, including a Harman Kardon speaker on my desk, which I use to play Spotify while I work. And in the living room, I've got another Harman Kardon speaker. That's on my shelving unit. And these kick out some serious bass. And these are around £150 each. But my favorite speaker of all is actually the Google Home Max. And I've got that in the kitchen. Now, I only recently got this, and this was to replace a Harman Kardon speaker that I had in here as well. 
and this is on sale at the moment for about 200 pounds or 300 dollars down from about 400 so these can be paired to create a stereo setup if you'd rather but i'll tell you what one on their own really is enough and it's really really impressive it really fills the room as well but these speakers aren't just here to play spotify they act as a microphone for all of my voice commands so it's worth placing them in areas where you may wish to use a voice command like turning the lights on or just playing music Another awesome piece of tech that I've been using for the last few months is this vacuum. But let me just start by saying this does not replace a decent handheld or normal vacuum, but it's great for what I need it to do. So I have it set up to vacuum the downstairs once a day. It will then work its way around all the rooms, picking up any dust, drop food, forgotten dreams, cat hairs and so on. And it's not very tall, so it means it fits under most furniture as well, like the tables and chairs in the kitchen and even the shelving unit I've got in the living room. It has no trouble at all. So it's quite clever, and it's clever enough to map out every room using sensors, and it's pretty accurate as well, so it would even work out where the tables and chairs are, and it won't even hit them. So once it's worked out where those items are in the room, it will navigate around those. You can even see in the app the route that it's taken, how much time it's spent cleaning, and manually start and stop it too, either through the app, tapping the top of the device, or just using a voice command. Then once finished, it will then find its way back to the charging dock, ready for the next day. Now it's not bad at what it does, and although it can do both cleaning and vacuuming, it won't scrub areas where there are marks or stains, it will just pass through it once, so it's not really designed to be your only vacuum. Plus if you've got a thick pile of carpet like I have, it will leave wheel lines wherever it's been, rather than your typical vacuum lines. Prices vary depending on which item you go for, but this particular one is currently £450 or $400, although I have seen it on sale on Amazon for as low as $200. So smart home plugs are an awesome option for making non-smart items kind of smart. And this lets you control any normal household items such as lamps, TVs, coffee machines, or items you can't reach the plug for easily like a washing machine or dishwasher. So I use TP-Link plugs, and these cost around £30 or $20 for a pair, and they don't require a hub either as they just use Wi-Fi. And these plugs can be grouped as well together, so in Google Home, if you have a routine set up for example, they will act like any other smart item. So for example, when I say lights on in the kitchen, it not only turns on the LifeX bulbs I have over the table, it will then turn on the LED strip via the smart plug. And you know what it's like when it's Christmas? It's always a pain climbing under the Christmas tree every morning and every night to turn those lights on and off. So by plugging them into one of these smart plugs, you can now control it via the app or your speakers. But they also act as a normal plug too. So all you need to do is just tap the icon or the button on the front of the plug and it will still turn them on and off like any typical plug. So a couple of years ago, I actually changed my heating and hot water thermostats to the Hive system. And that basically lets me control it all via an app, as well as integrating it with Google Home. So this is the physical thermostat, which lives in the hallway. And as you can see, it shows you the basic information that you need, including the current and the target temperatures. You can spin the dial to adjust the temperature when walking past, for example, or you can tap the buttons on the top to either boost the heating or the hot water. So it's no different to a normal thermostat, really. But it's the app and Google Home integration is where it's really useful. So in the Hive app, I can create routines or schedules for both the heating and the hot water, setting multiple start and finish times throughout the day. Also, while I'm out, I can always check on what the house temperature is set to. So if it's a little bit cold and I'm out, I can always boost it before I get home. But while I'm at home, if I'm feeling lazy, I could use the app or voice commands to set the thermostat without even leaving the room or going downstairs to check it. A feature that I've used quite a few times is holiday mode. So it means that while I'm away or planning to go away, I can set it to a reduced thermostat temperature to stop the hot water from running and the heating from kicking in. And then I can have it switch itself back on a day or two before I return home. So I got this from Amazon and it was about £200 which included installation. And to be honest, no extra work was required because it literally replaces the control box on the boiler and it replaces the thermostat. So anybody can really retrospectively fit this to their own house. So as I've already mentioned, I use Google Assistant to control my home. So it kind of combines all of the individual apps from each piece of tech into one place. Now the other apps are great and you can't really replace those with the Google Home app. But once you've set up your devices and you've sorted out all your routines and your themes and your scenes, you can just stick with Google Home to control them all. And what's great about the Google Home app is you can see which lights are on, which speakers are playing music, and you can start and stop any tech item that you've linked to Google Home. Again, there's no need to open each separate app individually to complete the job. But you might be wondering why bother? Why spend more money on smart tech when normal appliances are absolutely fine? Some items don't really need to be smart or controlled via an app. It's a bit gimmicky and it would be fine without. However, when you factor in the time spent doing things manually, so for example, like turning lamps on and off, so if every morning and every night you went around and you turned on five or 10 lights, the time spent 
could be saved with a 5 second voice command to do exactly the same job, or leave an appliances on standby when you could have turned them off via a smart plug, and you can start to then see the benefits. Then there's the huge benefit of accessibility, so if you or someone you know have difficulty reaching light switches or plugs, well you can have those items retrospectively made smart with either a plug or a bulb. And that's a huge advantage for probably quite a lot of people, old and young. I mean, in fact, I think even my own grandparents would benefit from these smart items. So that's all of the smart home tech that I'm currently using on a daily basis around my house, all of which are pretty affordable on their own, and most don't require any serious or professional installation. But there are loads of other items that I do want to add to my home, possibly smart locks, cameras, and definitely a ring doorbell. I might even get a couple of those Google hubs with the screen, but I don't really need any. Have you got any other suggestions for me? Anything that I should be using and I should definitely be using on a daily basis? And as always, thank you for watching. If this video was useful to you, please consider dropping a like. And if you're interested in seeing more Tesla or tech videos, why not subscribe? You can also follow me on my other social channels, including Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.